Welcome back to Chemistry, It Is All That Matters, and today we're going to be talking about determining error. So when we are doing our chemical experiments and we're gathering data and making calculations, we're going to be comparing two values. First, we're going to be gathering the accepted value, and the, the accepted value is the value that is accepted as the standard value based upon known quantities and variables. So if you were to go to the handbook of chemistry and look up the density of aluminum, you would find that the density of aluminum is 2.7 grams per milliliter. If you were to look up the specific heat of water in its liquid state, you would find that water has a specific heat of 4.184 joules per grams degrees Celsius. So this is an agreed upon standard value that is accepted by all chemists around the world and this is our accepted value. Now the experimental value is the value that you obtain or you gather through your data and observations through your experimentation it is what you calculate based on the values you obtain. So the difference between the experimental value and the accepted value is called our error. Now we know that in our labs because we don't have perfect equipment, in fact we don't have the greatest equipment at all. We wish we could but we don't so we know there are going to be certain mistakes that are made whether those mistakes are made on your behalf as an experimenter you spilled some material, you left some residue in the beaker um, you have residue left on the watch glass, whatever it may be, there are going to be errors. So those errors are going to create a difference between the experimental value, the value you are able to uh, obtain, and the accepted value, the known value that all chemists accept as the true value. So that error can give us what we call percent error. Now percent error is taking the experimental value minus the accepted value dividing it by the accepted value and then multiplying it by 100 percent. Now we always want our percent to be a positive value so therefore the error is always going to be absolute value. It's always going to be a positive value. So percent error equals the absolute value of experimental minus accepted divided by accepted and then you multiply by 100. Now multiplying by 100 is the same as moving the decimal 2 to the right. So think of it that way. Experimental minus accepted divided by accepted and then move the decimal 2 to the right. So let's look at two examples here. So first we're going to say this problem here we have during a lab a student calculates the density of an aluminum bar to be 2.45 grams per milliliter. She checks the handbook of chemistry and finds the density should actually be 2.7 grams per milliliter. Let's determine the percent error for her calculations. So percent error is her experimental value which was the 2.45 grams per milliliter. The actual value from the handbook of chemistry should be 2.7 grams per milliliter. Again we're going to get the absolute value of that which comes out to be 0 0.25 grams per milliliter. We will then divide that by the 2.7 grams per milliliter, the accepted value, and then multiply that by 100%, which is actually moving the decimal 2 to the right, and we find that her error is 9.25%. So example number two. During a lab, a student calculates the volume of one mole of gas to be over by 5.6 percent. So his calculations are going to be greater than the actual value and that means are the accepted value and that means that we're always we're automatically going to have a positive. So he checks the handbook of chemistry and finds the volume should actually be 22.4 liters per mole. So what is his experimental value? Well, we're going to take the 5.6 percent error and that's going to be equal to the x value, which is his experimental value, minus the accepted value, which was from the handbook of chemistry, 22.4 liters per mole. We're going to divide that by the 22.4 liters per mole and multiply that by 100 percent. 
So we're going to do the calculations and that 100% actually makes it 0 0.056. We're going to multiply by the 22.4 liters per mole from the denominator. That's going to give us a value of 1.2544 liters per mole. We then add algebraically the 22.4 liters per mole to the left and that gives us our experimental value of 22.6 liters per mole. So quickly we are looking for percent error. Percent error is experimental value, the value found during the lab, the calculated value from the data and observations made by the experimenter, the accepted value usually looked up in the handbook of chemistry or provided to you by your teacher, we're going to divide that absolute value quantity divided by the accepted value and multiply by 100% and multiplication by 100% is actually moving the decimal 2 to the right. Now remember we're always dealing with a positive value when we're talking about the percent error.